What's up guys? Kevin here, back again with another video. Today I am going to be doing a quick review of Terrell Winston's new Reebok project. Um, it is the Club C Revenge as well as the Classic Leather. Uh, I have them right here behind me. Uh, this middle one is the Classic Leather, or no, that's the Club C Revenge and this is the Classic Leather. I also brought out the original uh, like, like collaboration that released um, like just about a year ago um, and I don't have the um, the question anymore the question was the uh, the second pair to come out from the first collaboration alongside the Club C uh, like both shoes were released uh, I believe early November uh, it, they both retailed for 140 and they were available first on uh, like Toral Winston's website and then it was available on Reebok as well as now I believe it's hit all the other uh, third-party retailers. So in a recent interview when they talked about um, the product as well as at his Hong Kong uh, exhibition uh, he talked about the part two of his collaboration where he sort of um, wanted this project to be democratized and sharing his story as well as his evolution of his brand with a bunch of other people. So what I interpreted that as was uh, he was making this a lot more widely available and a lot more accessible, etc., to pretty much like everybody. And I do think that um, he did accomplish that. Um, it was a lot more available uh, compared to the original Club C. Uh, as well as it was definitely more democratized in the sense stock numbers. So more retailers, more stock, as well as maybe this would be more enticing to the general audience potentially. So just a quick background for like Terrell Winston. He's originally from California, but moved to New York and has done work in a bunch of other places like Chicago and Detroit, but he currently lives and works in New York. Um, he is a more contemporary artist with a lot of cool like installations with uh, sports paraphernalia as well as like basketball as well as sort of that sort of vintage look as well as his like signature itself is quite interesting and he's done a lot of artwork regarding that. He kind of, to me, he kind of feels like Tom Sachs-esque slash maybe Virgil-esque slash Benjamin Edgar-esque. Um, I believe that he really taps into that sort of sarcastic um, millennial slash Gen Z sort of mentality um, where his art is basically just saying like, fuck you, basically. Um, but I do think it's really cool. He has a few installations at a few of the Ame locations as well as I believe there's also some art at uh, like Notre Chicago. Um, etc. So he has done work all around the place um, and this is his second collaboration with Reebok. So the reason why he chose the Club C for both times is because that is his go-to artist or studio pair of shoes. He has a bunch of them just all beat up, dirtied and stuff. Uh, so he actually has a pair of Club C's that he used as reference for this original one. Um, where it was essentially just a classic GR pair of Club C's um, and then it's just beat, worn, uh, like he cut out the Reebok logo, etc. So he made it his own and that is what they took inspiration for the first release for. And then the second release also has that classic Reebok blue on the inner Terry cotton lining as well as this one feels a lot more like uh, a classic Reebok OG like 85, even though it is on the Revenge model, uh, which I'll go into the details about that as well as there's a few differences on this. And then he was tasked on creating a classic just because it is the 40 year anniversary for the Reebok classic. So a lot of uh, people are doing, um, I guess, collaborations on the classic to sort of push the model. Um, I believe Jound is releasing his in first week of December. Um, I know that Eames has been doing classics. Um, I know a bunch of other collaborators have been doing it as well. Uh, so the classic and the Club C Revenge. So there's a few differences, like I mentioned before, 
between the Club C as well as the Club C Revenge, the part two of the, uh, I guess, collaboration, and I'll go into those details right now. So speaking purely from the original, here is the original Club C, and here is the Club C Revenge. So here the two shoes are. Uh, the immediate thing that you'll notice on the new one is there's an extra Reebok panel right here, as you can see, the original does not have that. Um, another thing that you will note is the bottoms. The bottoms are completely different. So the original had this almost, um, like you know those vintage um, like Coca-Cola bottles where they have that like slight green tint to it. That's essentially what the original um, out outsole looked like. But for this one, they chose the translucent blue with Terrell Winston. And on the other shoe, pull that out right now, it says 1985, which was supposed to represent when the Club C initially came out, as well as that's Terrell Winston's birth year. So going on to the details of the upper, the upper of the Club C Revenge has this tan sort of um, leather, tumbled leather on the Reebok cutout, while the original has just like a heavy duty canvas. Um, another thing to note is that the tongues are a, a little bit different. Uh, like obviously the topography is gonna be different, but the original one, the tongue is uh, thicker and it's a finished uh, tongue where it's folded in on itself. So it creates like a bit more of a thicker tongue. Well, this one is like a classic Reebok where it's that thinner uh, tongue with nylon on the outside while the original had some leather all across the tongue. This one is that classic uh, Reebok nylon, um, as well as on the back, it says Terrell Winston on the original. This one has that classic Reebok athletics shoe as well as the size tag there. Again, another thing to note is that the Club C Revenge, the new one, has all navy on the inside pretty much with the Terrell Winston signature and the NY logo there. Uh, and on the back tab, the original had a faux pony hair cow fur there, while the new pair has 3M and Terrell's signature right there, as you can kind of see. One thing I thought was kind of interesting, and I have never seen this on a pair of Reeboks, is that it almost looks like they took a Dremel and sand it down the sole to make it smooth. Um, and I, I know that on first look doesn't look that different, but it is quite different because all the other uh, Reeboks, at least that I know, have this sort of same classic pebbled outsole. Well, this is the only one that has it sort of sanded down. Um, there are some slight defects with it, given that it was sanded down, I'm assuming by hand, and I'll show you those right now. As you guys can kind of see there, there is like a slight yellow mark as well as you can genuinely see that this originally did have pebbling, but you can see by the stitches, around the stitches, you can see a little bit of pebbling left over. Um, you can see that all throughout the shoe that this used to have some sort of pebbling. As you can see right there, used to have some sort of pebbling, but I don't know, I like, I'm not gonna lie, I like the look of it being smooth, but there are some points where I do think that there is some sort of uh, almost manufactured defect. Uh, let me grab the other shoe. Yeah, so on the other shoe, you can kind of see that maybe they sanded it down a little bit too much where some of the translucent blue is showing. Um, and you can definitely see it like right here. If my camera, But other than that, I think this is a great introduction and it's clearly widely available so people are able to get their hands on it. I don't think it's sold out anywhere but Terrell's website, which I'm assuming had not that much stock. 
Um, it's available on Reebok, it's available on a bunch of other retailers. Here is the classic that I talked about. Both shoes have all over uh, pretty nice tumbled leather. Um, nice tumbling finish. Um, I will say that the classic, in my opinion, I like the classic out of the two pairs that released with the part two. I like the classic the most. Um, I think it's quite interesting. Although I know you'll say, bro, it's just a white pair of classics, but I do think that all the leather detailing as well as a grayed out logo just kind of adds to that like if you know you know type of vibe same sort of terrell winston uh, signature on the back um, it's cool that this is 3m as well as the ankle um, heel stabilizing area it also has 3m piping um, and this is just again another simple classic both shoes came with cream and white laces uh, they are just the classic poly laces. That is actually something that I'm a little bit disappointed about. Um, the original uh, release actually came with, I believe, two or three pairs of laces. And the material of them is night and day. This is a nice, heavy, um, almost cotton. And it, it really does feel extremely nice and heritage. And I genuinely think this will way outlast the other constantly produced like poly lace. Let's see if I can show you guys the difference between the two. You guys can sort of see the pattern itself as well as how dense the fabric is. The old pair had a much nicer pair of laces. Although I am probably being just picky about this. The outsole is a soft polyurethane outsole. Clear Terrell Winston on both sides for the classic. And again, everything is that classic nylon, nylon, uh, like no extra, I guess, sort of details outside of the outsole and uh, the tongue tab here. Um, another thing that I think is different from the previous release is that both pairs have a nylon sort of smooth insole while the old, old pair had the terry cotton lining all throughout the insole. I forgot to show this off earlier, but here are the new boxes. On top, it just says Terrell Winston, size tag, and a Reebok logo. It's pretty simple. Ugh, simple. Uh, the old one was just a blacked out Reebok box. Nothing too special about it. Um, all black. Both of them were flip top. I will say that the new boxes, although the old one wasn't that special, um, I do like that they added the Terrell Winston as well as Terrell Winston paper and Reebok. Um, again, both of them, I would, f I stick true to size on my Club C's. Um, if you like a really snug fit, because Club C's do stretch, especially the nicer leather Club C's do stretch, um, I would recommend maybe sizing down half a size. With the classics, I typically go up half a size. Um, I still haven't really like, I think they'll break in, but you could go true to size. Just personally, I like going up half a size for classics just cause I like that more roomy fit. So yeah, like, let me know what you guys think of this part two of the release. Personally, I still prefer the part one, uh, club C. Um, I think the texture of the leather as well as the thickness of the leather on the part one is nicer than the part two. I think the part two almost has this glossy finish over it while the part one, the first one, um, it had more sort of like a thicker matte leather finish where I, it really did feel premium. Um, in my opinion, you can still find the first release on secondhand markets like Grail, eBay or Goat uh, for a decent price, especially used. Um, I think I picked up a second pair for like $80 used, $90 used. Um, this is my third pair, if I remember correctly. Um, this new release, although I like it, I think it'll be great for those who missed out on the first one and just want like a brand new clean pair, because uh, I know new pairs of the first one are going for kind of expensive. Um, but I like the classics more than the Club C Revenge on this time around. Uh, yeah, I will do an on foot and let me know what you guys think. Uh, are you guys gonna pick this up? Are you guys gonna wait for it to hit sale? Like, let me know in the comments down below. I will make sure to respond. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching again. I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.